Hello again Stroke Club, today I'm bringing you another build video and this one is for Wilson, Words of Mayhem. It is a sacred uh, based code build uh, for the Paladin kind of class uh, as I like to call it uh, using Wrath of Buffet of uh, sacred damage, uh, modified for sacred damage to be our main source of uh, DPS together with uh, Juggernaut being a huge damage on bosses doing up to like 6 million crits, close to 6 million crits with uh, this setup with this gear at level 78 against level 97 to 98 enemies as I tested it. Then I'm using the two healing spells Solar Fall and Bulwark of Down which were great. I was playing a similar build in the beta every now and then uh, with Bleeding Catch instead of the Chains and with Bulwark of Down but since Solar Fall is new, Juggernaut is new, the build is getting better and better and it can also execute enemies that are under 15% HP due to our passives. I'm also using the Shout for extra resistances, extra movement speed and uh, other things uh, that can help us which I'm explaining later. I'm also using uh, Wings of Ishmir just to move around uh, the map. I've modified it for stamina cost rather than cooldown because I've taken a note that severely punishes my movement speed which you can remove the the node, uh, the passive node that removes uh, that reduces the movement speed so you can be a bit more mobile than me in this video. So stay tuned, check the different explanations, the build video might be a bit longer so at certain times you might want to skip forward if you don't need the detailed suggestions for alternative uh, passives, alternative gear and so on. And uh, without further ado let's bring you let's the good start stuff. by showing you what skills the build was using. I'm gonna quickly go through all of them and then show you a little bit of info about the modifier. So we have Wings of Ishmir, so Wrench Out. Solar Fall, Bulwark of Down and Juggernaut. For our main attack we are using Wrath of Befet. And as you can see I've left some nodes unpicked so you can decide what you want based on the suggestions. For Wings of Ishmir it is crucial to pick Relentless Pursuit so you don't have a cooldown on the skill but it costs stamina. One stamina per cast, per charge. Then increased flight speed helps uh, for the animation being faster. If you don't want it, you can probably experiment with other things uh, that can get unlocked. There's a lot of stuff that can get unlocked depending whether you want to be focusing on damage, on stunning or on threat generation. This is how I used it in the video. If you decide to use this then you have options, uh, this one avoid it because you don't have cooldown so that does nothing for you. You can either get crit chance score, threat generation if you're playing in a party or status ailment chance score. And status ailment chance score would be great when I go into the passive suggestions for how to further develop this build. You would see some great things that can be done with uh, status ailments to boost your damage and to, or to cause different explosions and uh, not just your damage but the damage to your allies as well so keep that in mind next sovereign shout actually just let me f quickly finish uh, telling you about this one creates a vortex before landing that pulls in enemies within an area and effect uh, rage generation pretty important uh, so you can keep moving and generating uh, rage and increased weapon damage this is also optional if you don't want to be using this skill for damage remove it and but something else. Now, uh, back to Sovereign Shout. This is great for movement speed, attack speed, regeneration, or resistance score, and even casting speed. Although for the casting, we're not going to be doing it that much, it's still nice to have it. So, Shout inflicts stun on enemies. This is not really needed. Use it if you want, don't use it if you don't want. Crowd control immunity is pretty good. Uh, chance to frenzy enemies, probably nice, but most of the time they're gonna die. If you really have trouble surviving, global wife leech is great. I strongly suggest with this setup, the way I've made it in the passives, to get the movement speed. Uh, if you don't want to be too slow, you can kind of uh, you can kind of not take this thing. If you don't take this thing, you're losing up to up to 60% damage when when standing static but at least you're not losing that much movement speed. You're also losing uh, up to 100% of the 
or resistance score and up to 100% health regeneration uh, so keep that in mind as well okay back to the skill as I said movement speed is important increased effectiveness is important because look at that look at how the things change so I've taken the increases the duration of the buff and I've taken your resistances and I've taken the regeneration and the movement speed one thing life leech good thing without the effectiveness the life leech you can see is only 5% um, enemies hit by the shout are inflicted with weakness you could do that and it's a great synergy with the build and it's 100% chance you apply one weakness stack unless you do something with the passives which would be to take uh, this note and it's probably good to do it it's probably good to do it and to have more weakness stacks etc applied walk chance always a great thing to pick consider it and restore stamina points when the skill is cast uh, goes very well so you could kind of uh, kind of uh, do this shout and do this more and if you use your bulwark of down it also regenerates uh, stamina not directly it just reduces the stamina regeneration rate so consider using this for movement or the block chance this is not gonna be something to use for crits something for uh, for survivability or for utility depending on what you decide so consider this Another thing, threat. If you're playing with other players, you might want to generate threat so that they can focus on the damage you can focus on. Well, survivability for the group, damage for the group, and just swashing things with those chains. So something like this would be a good setup. Then, you have solar fall. Solar fall, punishing brilliance, damage dealt uh, in the air effect increases over time. This is nice, increases tick rate, this is nice. Creates a novel when dealing critical damage, effect has a cooldown, also nice. Increased crit damage, and if effect becomes static when cast, can be recast to change its location. So this is basically this thing. I can cast it there, it stays there, and if I'm there, I'm getting all resistances and healing. But I can recast it if I see that my ally needs some health. But it travels slowly, so keep that in mind. Then this one, grants buff to all resistances. Experiment, see if you like some other things like this one to make the area move faster area effect deals in, uh, damage instantly when the player is hit by an enemy effect has a cooldown this is also in, uh, in interesting setup but I think this is what I like the most from all the experiments I had so here increases health regeneration per tick on bulwark of down increased stamina regeneration I strongly recommend using that if you're using uh, if you're using this one, this allowing vessel, then boundless cornucopia, increase healing rate, so more healing, increase healing rate again here, increase healing carry of effect, uh, actually not increase healing, but the healing carry of effect follows the player that it was cast on. I strongly happy. suggest using that one. So this is it. You can move, and it would follow you around. And this one reduces the cooldown. It's necessary to get that reduced cooldown. Even if you don't get increased duration, you can at least get the cooldown. I think it's worth 3.5 seconds cooldown over extra 3 seconds duration. You could try and get both, but in most of the times I really don't need the duration that much, but I do need the cooldown. Experiment removing some things, maybe you can remove this one that follows you and get the duration or maybe you can remove uh, the stamina regeneration and get the duration up to you guys. Uh, it doesn't cost anything to respect those uh, attributes here, to do respect those modifiers. Juggernaut is a great skill, it's one of the best skills currently for warrior. Uh, for both survivability and damage and how it works is the more it absorbs the more damage it does so what we do is I actually like doing this grants rage when receiving damage this is optional you might want to generate more threat to being uh, to be a tank inflicts portion of your weapon damage on enemies attacking the shield this is probably also not um, not that necessary so those two are optional and you can remove both of those and pick something else like stuns or being able to cast it on allies or immunity to crowd control but increasing the uh, reducing the duration 
up to you. This is how I do it though. Then increases the damage absorption, reduces the movement speed though, so don't use it unless you need it. Then reduces uh, damage received from projectiles, pretty nice. Reduces rage cost, uh, I like that too. When cast force shoot is empty and added to maximum absorption, this is not bad if you have force shoot. I don't because of my armor, which I'm gonna show you later. Can be cast on towers, as I said, it's nice. Reduced cooldown, amazing, take it. Maximum absorption is increased by a percentage of your block chance. And this is where you have the synergy of getting extra block chance here to get that. Uh, having max absorption so it can do more damage and that's why it's it's gonna be nice when you stack more block chance for the build with the things I'm gonna show you later that can increase it someone's a decoy I don't I don't like this very much I don't like this increases the absorption again great for damage grants immunity ground control eh. not so bad but you can get that from other places and uh, finally the Rat of Buffet, is, is again I left some things unpicked so you can pick. Uh, ideally I would take it like that, but I didn't notice that much of a difference in the attack. I mean yeah there is difference but you might wanna have a bit more chance to afflict ailments or maybe ailment damage but since we're not going for ailment damage I, I would suggest this or this this would be great so so we can do something that I'm gonna show you later in the passive skill section so that's our main damaging skill for the attributes while leveling up I would put everything into ferocity until you see that your crit chance score uh, starts standing above 50 percent once you start getting your ferocity above 50 percent you can start spending points into toughness and in the end you're probably gonna have 80 percent uh, put into ferocity 20 percent into toughness or if you want a little bit more survivability and hp you can probably go seven points ferocity three points toughness uh, but of course as soon as you think uh, you can dump more points into toughness just dump more what I do is I keep putting points into ferocity then at one level when I think I've got enough once I get enough crit, uh, crit chance nodes in the passive tree then I start putting maybe 10 points one level here then another level I'll put 5 and 5 but I try to keep kind of like a balance between those uh, starting from putting, in, putting everything into ferocity at the start though for the aspect of apocalypse I would suggest going for the sacred one I've not played much with it and I still don't have it unlocked on this specific hero. So I can tell you that it's giving me one of the highest damage numbers above all of those. So it's probably nice to, to do it, nice to, to play with that one since all the sacred damage and occult damage stacking. Second best would be this one because it's still occult damage and we're still stacking occult damage. So that's what I'm using right now. Now let's move on to the passives. Something probably everyone is still trying to figure out how it works and which ones to pick, which ones to ignore. I did take increased uh, increased crit chance for spells. I'm not sure whether it was worth it, but I think it's nice so we can trigger some things that trigger on crit. Since we're going for sacred, it's not bad if you take uh, if you take this one to apply weakness stacks upon walking and then additionally this weakness stack would also be nice and what you see here this is uh, the warmonger this is the the praetorian so we're just going here to reach this quickly and to get that extra ferocity and the attack speed and your resistance is on the way I would suggest while leveling up to do the typical warrior thing if you want to level up with this build but I think this build is not great for leveling Especially if you use this, don't use this if you're leveling up. So I would suggest going this way, rushing that one here. You really don't need the crit that early in the game that much. Of course it's nice to have it, but I'd suggest going for this damage and then to take uh, this double damage over here. So while leveling up, uh, just a second, while leveling up, the first thing you might want to rush would be the double damage and and the rage so you want this to be here so you do one two three four five etc et ten this should be ten points and then you can do another 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and that's 15 points by level 15. Next, most people would prefer to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 to get max willpower and rage and eventually move on to getting 1, 2, 3 for this max willpower and rage. And after that, it's strongly recommended to get the crit damage. Once you've gotten that crit damage, you can unlock this point here and do this thing here. So you can do something, I think you can do something like that. And then get the crit chance from our store. Eventually get the intravenous narrow cord, so you need that attack speed. Eventually you might need this one to here. And as the time goes, you would really want to, to get EOS. As soon as you can, you would need to rework your passive so you can get EOS. So I would suggest at this point, at this point actually you might not have taken this yet, but as I said you need it. You might do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 points. Once those are ready, you rotate the ring in this way. And then you do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 points. So you can insta kill enemies uh, such as champions, uh, underlings and, and uh, specialists when they reach 15% HP and you attack them with sacred and we will be attacking with sacred. Then you would want to get that. I should have probably gotten this one first before getting that. Uh, and after this you get this one here and then if you want you can get that extra 5% block chance. But for block chance there's better options. Uh, and that you can get under uh, arms maester was it yeah block chance here so eventually for for this setup the way it is right now you would do this 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 that gives you even more crit chance score and then you get uh, this one and then one two here one two here and then i would suggest getting uh, things like maybe this one handed damage if you want it or this block chance, but I don't think it's really worth getting those. So I would suggest going for this one and this one. But not this one though. You don't you don't want rent damage, so just this one here is more than enough if you want to do more damage to enemies while walking. It's not necessary, it's not really gonna give you that much and this 10% crit damage is better uh, left for the last, uh, last points that you can invest. But good things to remember would be this block efficiency and HP. So if you do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that might be enough for this tree if you don't think you like that. The other things won't do you that much good in this part here. So as I said, there's good combos. Good combos for weaknesses So, and for stacks. One thing you can consider, uh, as I said here, you have to take this residual energy. Uh, one thing you can consider, as I said, would be... Uh, getting that additional ailment stacks applied. Maybe you can do this status ailment uh, chance score. Max ailment stacks, max ailment stacks, then occult status ailment score and status ailment chance score. With this you would be going for that one. Every ailment uh, that stacks which you inflict is also inflicted on you. Each time you reach 10 stacks of one ailment type, that ailment is removed completely giving you and your allies a bonus for a short time depending on which ailment is removed. So basically you're applying stacks and when you reach 10 stacks applied on an enemy which gets applied to you, uh, you would uh, get this bonus damage. 30% damage increase for yourself and allies in a 4 meter radius for 7 seconds when weakness stacks are removed. And with the armor I'm using, we can only apply weakness at the moment. Ideally, late, uh, early game, when you're leveling, you would be doing maybe cursed and uh, and you would be doing weakness. So you would probably have some cursed uh, stuff into your weapon, shadow damage into your weapon. And you might be using a cursed spell, like a shadow, shadow damage uh, uh, modified uh, Winter's Grasp or shadow damage modified... Uh, Thunder Strike or, or anything else with shadow damage like maybe even Slayer's Fury would not be that bad. And this one allows you to have 30% chance of increasing the number of element stacks applied to yourself. So 
that's one thing to consider. If you want to be the team resurrector, you can probably get uh, this attack damage, sacred damage, this sacred damage, or this healing uh, from spells, and this one here. Maybe even this one here, if you really need it. But I don't think that's gonna be really needed. There's more all resistances to get here, there's more force shield and all resistances, and more force shield here. So, a lot of things to consider. Then, another thing worth considering would be this thing here for explosions. I was mentioning something about explosions, and this is great. So, you can do this here, one point in that side. Then this one, just for extra resistances, won't be bad. Then you go for for this uh, this here, willpower cost reduction. Then willpower cost reduction maybe, or er elemental resistance in minus HP. But I'd rather take this one. Then this one here, transfer time reduction between willpower and rage is great, but not necessary. But this here. Whenever your willpower is under a certain percentage, each time you use a skill, there is a small chance that you will cause an explosion. You and enemies take a percentage of your maximum health or force shield, whichever is highest as damage, and the percentage of your willpower is regenerated. So this would help you uh, deal with the willpower regeneration, because since we are transferring our willpower regeneration into a rage generation to get that double damage as well, this would help you kind of have some some willpower and it's um, it's be when when the willpower is below 30 percent of its maximum you have a chance to cause that explosion and yeah since we have shit tons of hp um, due to transferring all the force shoot into hp this will gen regenerate uh, 20 percent of the willpower and the cooldown is five seconds so every five seconds this might be able to trigger and uh, it would be triggering a lot believe me i've not tested it but i will and i think it would be a great option then for survivability what else we can add all resistance score those three points here then as i said this and this for the block chance and the block chance over here in, in Arms Maester. So if you have any leftover points you can get this 24 shield and you can consider other 4 shield nodes like this 12. This will power on hit is not too bad either. Look for other places that can give you 4 shield but one great place to suggest would be this 4 shield. Then get that attack speed, that attack speed, this critical chance score to get into into the arms master. I'd suggest going that way when going from arms master. Another way to go to, ma to arms master would be since you probably would already have invested all the way here to be able to apply more ailments um, and maybe get this status ailment chance score. You might want to go this way and this way. But attack speed is great. And if you have some spare points, I would strongly suggest uh, going for this attack damage crit chance score, attack damage crit chance score movement speed and then attack speed attack speed this uh, kind of got uh, got buffed so it's great and then this attack speed score would be nice as well I don't suggest getting the casting speed but get this one and if you still have some points left you can get some more ferocity uh, it's always great you can get some extra rage cost reduction if you want you can even go for a second wind if you think you want the survivability. I think that's so much information uh, for ver various ways to sort this build, probably longer than it needed to be, but sorry for that. Hope this was uh, good info to provide you. The game is new, there's not much information for new players, and uh, us beta players should at least through do our best to provide you with all the info needed. And now let's talk about the gear. As you can see there are some uniques, some uniques that you could use and I can tell you more about other uniques that are good for the build. First of all you want Quintet of Sundown, so must have one to be able to cast sacred spells without the use of an artifact, of an, a catalyst. You can try and get a catalyst until you have this and maybe it would work, maybe it would be nice, but until then um, 
you're probably gonna be using just uh, just attacks until you get the catalyst or until you get the quintet of sundowns to allow you to cast sacred spells and it's only sacred spells that we can do if you want access to to shadow spells uh, you can use this one to get access to shadow spells and it's not bad and shadow spells would cost rage so consider getting that one as well and then next what I could suggest is trying to get this one to increase the healing from spells and to give you max willpower and rage and the max willpower and rage is great because uh, it's, uh, it adds up extra damage for this one it stacks up with this one and it stacks up with this one here and you can also get max willpower and rage from doing untainted enemies untainted enemies you can ward them by mean? selecting an expedition uh, and so just uh, rolling some modifiers, one, two, three, four modifiers, and then you can wear untainted. And then, if you want, you can wear a fifth modifier, and it's not gonna be bad. You can just do that. And uh, when you enter the expedition, it will give you untainted enemies which uh, do not drop, uh, but in the end, uh, when you open chests and when you open the boss chest you would be getting special items and there are rings that can give you max willpower and rage, keep that in mind. There's also rings that give you residual energy, which is this one, attacks gain 30% damage from the wasp spell cast, the type of damage is the same as the wasp spell cast, strongly suggest going for rings that give you this. 15% on one ring, 15% on the other would be probably better than going for rage rings because most of the time your rage won't be that full but it's still gonna be good to get that extra rage nevertheless if you, if you don't have the residual energy. For rings look out for occult damage but what? Look out for, for X to Y sacred, X to Y shadow, X to Y aether. It's the, it's the better option out of them and look out for steel rings, steel rings that give you crit damage at the top and crit damage at the bottom should be a priority. Get that crit damage but get flat damage to attacks. Flat damage to attacks because the damage comes mostly from attacks which is Juggernaut and uh, Wrath of Buffet. So if you have a ring with 3 times flat damage to attacks, extra crit damage and maybe some force shield uh, is a good start. A cool, a cool status element chance score is not bad so it's also worth it. And uh, even HP is fine to get. Uh, uh, in the sockets I did go for one wife leech and the other one to give me sacred damage but you can go for something else. Uh, the same goes for the belt, the exact same rules apply to the belt, uh, uh, there is no belt as far as I remember uh, that gives crit hit damage at the top but there is crit hit chance score at the top and you can get crit hit damage at the bottom you can see and here I've gotten 2 times flat damage, it's not occult flat damage but at least it's something, it's something, it's physical and toxic and it's good, good uh, options, the material resistance score is not bad either and the HP but as I said the same stats I said for the rings apply to the belt and for the amulet uh, as well although for the amulet you want this one but before you get this one you're gonna probably have to find something uh, that gives you some of the things I've mentioned for the weapon uh, use any good triple socketed uh, one-handed weapon it could be sword it could be anything it could be axe it could even be a dagger Try to get something with occult damages, mine is not a good example. Mine has rent and whitening together with the, uh, the physical base. Ideally you would want something that gives you flat sacred, flat shadow and flat aether. This would uh, stack up so much uh, better with the setup I am going for. You want crit damage on the sword and attack speed is not bad and attack uh, crit chance score is also not bad. So if you have to pick 5 things. I would go for Fat Sacred, Fat Shadow, Fat Aether. Crit damage to attacks, um, crit chance to attacks and attack speed. Those 6 things is what I would prefer as the top rows. For any type of armor you would want occult damage plus percent ideally. If you can't get plus, uh, occult damage plus percent get damage plus percent. It's not that bad, something like this one, damage plus percent. Uh, crit chance score is great if you really need it, if you already have plenty 
then don't uh, don't bother that much trying to get it but things that are really important are rage and willpower cost reduction and uh, if you can get it transfer time reduction between willpower and rage uh, cooldown reduction is also great until a certain point uh, it's, it's always nice to have uh, things being able to be used quicker uh, ideally while leveling up until you get smile of the searing song you want to be going for some heavy armor all resistance armor would give you a great bonus uh, in the middle levels and at the late levels chest piece and helmet piece of the armor would go very well with this thing here and this thing here so you definitely want to be doubling the resistance points that your armor and helmet gives you until you get smile of the searing song that is so yeah, ferocity is good, crit chance score is good, attack speed score is good, uh, all resistance is great, but the cool damage is what you want for the damage and rage and willpower cost reduction for, uh, the sur for the sustain and resource generation for the sustain. Once you get smile of the ceiling song which converts your force shield into HP and uh, makes your attack supply weakness and also being able to only apply the weakness element, no other elements you're going heavily into the sacred route, you cannot mix much uh, with with the Veiled Eclipse pants to do shadow spells and do cursed for uh, cursing the enemies to take more damage then you would want to stack things with force shield once you get this armor things with force shield, just look at this helmet 1500 force shield uh, by removing it I lose like 20,000 HP by losing this one which gives me 2700 and another 1300 so let's say 4000 4, this removes so much force shield so yeah then you would wanna transition into force shield items to a certain extent still keep all resistances uh, if I could I would have all resistance here, all resistance here and uh, maybe all resistance here and then keep some force shield here and here and here maybe we'll see what uh, what is uh, the best choice later so what else to mention what else to mention use any other shield uh, before you get this one if you can for that block chance because a lot of block chance damage comes from here so if you have a shield equipped this damage is just great to miss out on I would suggest getting that early on when you can if you're going for the shield uh, ASAP socket wise I do prefer using uh, socket 1 here, socket 2 here and ideally here I would also be using socket 1 if I'm not using this one I do use socket 3 here for either HP or force shield I'm using HP before I get the smile of the searing song you can go and use all resistances if you want to if you're having trouble sur surviving use uh, percent all resistances and in the weapons uh, at first you can probably use shadow damage on socket 1 and then you move to socket 1 sacred damage uh, I didn't have a very good sacred damage once so I only used one of them and the other one I made physical but ideally you would have uh, more sacred all of them sacred or shadow so maybe the shadow would have uh, gone better there because it's occult, occult is getting boosted from my gear so the physical is not as great uh, of a choice there uh, compared to picking three occults here I decide to take resource generation but remember the same gems you put here, here and here you can rotate them however you want uh, as long as you have uh, the resources recommended something that you might want to get uh, is maybe block chance if you're missing it you might want to go for block chance uh, gems it would work well and I think that pretty much sums up the stuff uh, regarding this what starts to go after but ideally you, will want, you would want to uh, get as much resistance as possible the end goal would be um, to reach something uh, by level 80, 80 something to reach 6000 material uh, resistance 6000 of all resistances or at least 5000 of the resistances at the moment I don't have that much but you can see I'm still surviving because I've got this giving me resistances and this giving me resistances so yeah I kind of so yeah 
we can get some resistances. But keep it in mind, keep it in mind, uh, this one is a very rare item, very rare item. This one drops more often, this one I already got twice. Eventually you would get it, eventually. Playing this build is not that difficult. Uh, and as I said, there are different options where you want more mobility or not. I chose the option with more survivability and damage for the price of movement speed, but you might want to go a different route. The most important thing is to remember to use uh, your Juggernaut skill before elites, champions uh, and uh, bosses at the end of the map which are also considered champions and to just start with uh, the healing spell to get all resistances around you and the boss, hug the boss, make him hug you too, give each other some hugs and uh, make sure he's hitting you so he can get damaged by the Juggernaut skill. Of course use the shout to get the bonuses, use Bulwark of Down as well and you sower fall. Apart from that, everything else just uh, adds up and gives you the damage and survivability you need. If you have enjoyed the video and want to be notified when I upload more content, you can subscribe to my channel for Wosen, Torchlight Frontiers, Warhammer Chaos Bane, and Borderlands 3 content. Feel free to also smash the like or dislike buttons, and thank you for watching the video. Keep it cool, folks, and until next time, goodbye. Let's <laughs> go.